Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. We have an exciting guest here with us today, Monk Wienro. Am I pronouncing that I right? I liked it. That was pretty good. Okay, okay. We discussed this uh, before we went on the air just to make sure that I say that properly. It's, it's spelled Y-U-N-R-O-U, but it's pronounced Wienro. And Monk Wienro was a wonderful guest of ours from at the Seventh Cure Symposium, which we had last month. And um, so I would like to welcome Taoist Monk Wienro. <laughs> thanks for your efforts and thanks for having me here today. Yeah, you're very welcome. So um, how, let me ask you, what is the proper way to address a monk? Do I just call you Wienro or is it? You know, I take exception only to yo. Okay. Yo, dude. Yo, dude. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't care for that too much. <laughs> Not many people do. <laughs> I, never, I never really wrap my mind around yo, dude. Uh, but I'm I'm not a I'm not particularly a stickler for this, you know. It it depends. My students have uh, a Chinese word they use to address me as their teacher. Um, people who follow my Taoist uh, uh, writings and so on uh, use another word, which just means the teacher of the Tao. Mm-hmm. Um, my family still calls me my American name, Arthur. Okay, even though I don't really use that too much anymore you know, with people I meet now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, calling me in row is fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's what it will be then. Now, you're an author, activist, and Tai Chi master, um, and you have a lo- lifelong relationship with Taoism. What, can you tell us what Taoism is? I, I know it's not something that we can discuss in just oh, a few minutes, I w- but I wish I could. There I are, understand it's a graceful so many... form of exercise. No, 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 no. It's, okay. it's nothing to do with that. Okay. Um, Taoism is not an exercise. Okay. Taoism is a religion uh, and a philosophy, right. like, okay. like Buddhism. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the world's great uh, religious, spiritual, philosophical traditions. Mm-hmm. The reason why it's difficult to, to define it easily is that unlike the ones that are more familiar to your audience. There is a lot of debate about exactly how much of it is a philosophy and how much of it is a sort of a folk religion, the indigenous religion of China that was there, uh, a trickle down from shamanism um, before Buddhism came to China. Mm. Um, so we're talking, you know, thousands of years ago. Right. And and so now, whether or not it's a religion or a philosophy depends on the tr- on the practitioner because so many people now have incorporated Taoist ideas into their life. Right. Sometimes they don't even know they are doing so. Mm. So I, I, I offer as an example um, Star Wars nerds, mm-hmm. right? Star Wars devotees. Right. Um because the Star Wars universe, the Jedi Knights, and the, uh, the Rebellion and the Imperial Troopers and the, the magic and the, the so-called force and the worship of nature, the way the rebels live in that concocted uh, fantasy, mm-hmm. were, very much, were and are very much informed by George Lucas's interest in Eastern philosophy and his interest in Taoism. So, you know, you could think that Taoist masters are are Jedi Knights. Right. And you wouldn't be so far off um, sort of the real world reality of it, minus the lightsaber. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. (laughs) Real sabers, steel sabers, but not not humming ones with bright colors. (laughs) Right. So, so, you know, the the focus, the takeaway from all this is that, you know, it's a natural philosophy which has some sort of ritual and ceremonial, spiritual and religious elements. Mm-hmm. But it's about venerating nature and keeping the world and ourselves, our minds and bodies, in balance and in harmony with uh, the universe around us. Right. Yeah, and that's, uh, my gosh, with all the distractions that we have today, I would imagine that <clears throat> that philosophy is probably getting more important with a lot of folks I know I, for one, (laughs) 
could uh, probably deal with stress better than I do. Uh, Some, that, yeah, something that I've been thinking about. I mean, I, I think you're right. I think the message is increasingly relevant and important. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I think it's also increasingly appealing. Right. So, you know, we have a long uh, religious tradition in the West, which goes really far back to our early European roots of taking myths and legends mm -hmm. and getting really attached to them. Mm -hmm. So now we have entire religions that are based around stories of, you know, of concocted fictional characters. And mm -hmm. um, we we have biblical literalism now. So people take a novel, which has this name, the Bible, and but mm -hmm. it's a storybook. And, right. and they, uh, you know, we, we, we venerate a concocted deity. And, mm -hmm. and you know, Taoism and, and other Eastern religions are full of concocted deities. And in fact... Right. They are the embodiment of uh, natural forces and trees and birds. And I mean, this is a this is an intellectual, spiritual tradition that goes back to Native Americans and goes back to uh, you know the, the Middle East. It goes back to Africa. You know, this this shamanistic idea that we want to deify things in order to mark the way we feel about them mm. um, and make them important. Yeah, um, to sanctify them. Is, is an old tradition, and frankly, I, I kind of like that tradition mm -hmm. because I'm a storyteller. I'm a novelist. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how I spend as much of my time as I spend teaching and writing about Taoism in, in other media and in other forms, physically teaching martial arts and all that. I also spend a great deal of time writing, writing novels, which, you know, in the last 15 years or so are pretty much exclusively about China and, and ancient China and these ideas. So mm -hmm. I really love story. I love myths and legends. I've made my life around them. Mm -hmm. I understand their psychological, spiritual, emotional importance to people. Um, and the only caveat I would have is that, you know, when you when you become a literalist and when you when you think that a concocted character uh, was a real human being and you're willing to defend that fantasy either with your own life or by killing somebody who doesn't agree, mm -hmm. then we got trouble. So when you made the comment that, you know, this is a, becoming increasingly appealing, one of the reasons it is, is that with human evolution and the level of population on the planet right now, mm -hmm. we're jammed together and we don't have some of the lubrication and some right. of the opportunity to get along that we once did. Not that, you know, that kind of dogmatism was ever especially... Uh, good at making friends and neighbors. Mm -hmm. But um, now, or even more than ever, we can't afford to attach to stories like that. Right. So Taoism is an alternative that allows somebody to engage the spiritual, deeper side of life without adhering to something that divides us one from the other, mm. that leads us, as the Judeo-Christian notion of hegemony over the natural world does, for example, right. to destroy our all the living things that are around us in our in our this planet that is our home. Right. So for all those reasons, among many others, I think Taoism is really compelling. It really is, and um, <clears throat> it seems to me that um, as you mentioned, Native Americans and the uh, ancient Chinese and South Africans, uh, African people in the African nation had this. Uh, this idea of being one with the earth and with nature that I'm wondering at what point was it decided that people, human beings need to get away with, or get away from that philosophy and pray to a deity. And why is that so popular today? Overwhelmingly, I think so uh, let me let me shift to... let me shift my answer to reframe your question just okay. slightly. Okay. So rather than saying why was it important to pray to a deity, um, because I just got done talking about how we, you know, we embodied the spirits of you know rivers and trees and so on and, right. and made them deities, but praying to mm. them really wasn't a problem, right? I mean, mm. it actually enhanced our relationship with the natural world. Right. So the question might might be expressed differently. 
as, you know, what it is, what is it about the prevailing belief systems here in the West that makes us think we are so special that mm. we can treat the earth like a toilet right. and kill every other living thing around us um, because our some scripture, some novel tells us that all of this is here for us. Right. So in my view, that's a perversion, right? It's a perversion right. of of our relationship with the natural world. Mm -hmm. And it's it's highly objectionable. Mm -hmm. It's highly objectionable not because I care what people believe. Everybody's entitled to their own opinions and and, and their own faith. Mm -hmm. It's objectionable on account of how it manifests mm -hmm. in an environmental catastrophe. So we're in the middle of, you know, the sixth great extinction since yeah. the Earth has, has been... Uh, a, a rock floating through space mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's caused by us right um, our president-elect's denials notwithstanding right so you know we are creating climatic shifts that are affecting not only people who live on island nations like Kiribati in the south pacific mm -hmm. that's spelled k-i-r kiribati k-i-r-b-a-t-i -I, I think um but um you know Fiji and that, that sort of area, mm -hmm. Micronesia, where the, where people are having to leave their island nations because of the rising seas, the melting of the, of the polar ice caps and all that. So, Amazing. I mean, aside from the, the Holocaust against humanity that mm. it's causing and more is to come, Hurricane Sandy was only a little taste. Right. <clears throat> so there's a lot more. But then there's the Holocaust against the rest of the sentient world. Mm. Whales, who may be fully as smart as we are, just have a different sensorium and, you know, different mm -hmm. way of interacting with the, the world world elephants and you know which are being decimated and all the other sentient creatures all the way down to to fish you know there's a new book out about how much fish understand and uh, how aware they are and uh, of the world around them so the question is you know why is it okay to accept um, a millennia old text again a novel mm -hmm. storybook mm -hmm. um, which tells us that all of this is here for us even if we turn it into a toilet and it's left a charred, burning cinder, uninhabitable by anything but tortoises and cockroaches. Right. And we are long gone. And, you know, some people say, well, we'll be long gone because we're inventing artificial intelligence or, um, you know, this is just our destiny. But the Earth will, will uh, endure. The Earth as a, as a planet will endure. And, you know, that, that all that may well be true. The question is, how much do you care about the suffering of other sentient beings and the balance and harmony that I advanced when we started our conversation. So, right. you know, I believe that there were Aboriginal societies that were cruel and didn't live in balance and that they had some of those predilections and they died out, mm -hmm. you know. And the ones that lived in harmony with their resources persisted. We're still discovering new tribes in the Amazon and right. trying, to, trying to keep them from, you know, being polluted by modern influences and so on. So... um I think the question is not whether all Aboriginal tribes had this wonderful, harmonious sense as some of the Native American uh, cultures, I'm not a, a big expert on that, mm -hmm. um, may have, um, but rather, you know, can we recognize the pernicious results of cleaving to this mm -hmm. prevailing ethic now and this mythos and get real and serious about stepping away from it, mm -hmm. still enjoying the stories still enjoying the good lessons in the Judeo-Christian tradition, mm. you know, the compassion and, and, and the, the kindness um, and humility and frugality, which are hallmarks also of Taoism. But at the same time, step away from the stuff that makes us think we're so special. Right, right, superior to other things. Yes, otherwise yeah. we, we become so analogous to a cancer. You right, know? right. We, we grow un, at an unchecked rate as a population, we, we erase all the other living things the, the way a cancer mm -hmm. does to the surrounding cells, and, and mm -hmm. we ultimately kill the host, our planet. Mm -hmm. And we produce toxins, like you look at our oceans and rivers now and, right. and all that. So, you know, the analogy is an unkind one, and I don't enjoy making it. Right. But there are certain dimensions in which it's certainly true. Right, right. Well, we're talking to uh, Taoist monk Wien Ro, and uh, you can get more information on his website, which is monk wienrow.com and that's spelled y-u-n-r-o-u.com and there's a, a wealth of information on there about wienrow himself and uh, the many books that he's written um, now you also do seminars 
Am I getting that right in the area? So I do corporate speaking. Okay. Right? Sort of uh, motivational, inspirational, I guess is a better word. Mm -hmm. Speaking based on the ideas of harmony and balance in a business setting and in a organizational setting. Okay. Um, and I have, you know, some luminous clients whose names are on the site. Um, but increasingly, my time is taken up uh, with teaching Tai Chi, which is oh, a, okay. a martial art that is based mm -hmm. on, uh, not just based, but is sort of the physical expression of, of this belief system or this philosophy Taoism. Right. And I teach it at Boca Raton Regional Hospital. Oh. Um, and I teach uh, around the country. And in fact, you know, th there I do workshops and mm -hmm. and seminars and so on with with Tai Chi. And then I, I do that actually even around the world. Uh, I just came back from China and Laos. And last year at this time, I was in Australia as well. So, uh, you know, I, there's a, a wide ranging hunger for not only the ideas that you and I have just been talking about, mm -hmm. but also the the physical manifestation of the art, which takes us into areas of uh, emotional and psychological balance mm -hmm. and also health and longevity in the, for the physical body. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a growing uh, activity. Many people don't know that Tai Chi is a martial art and began as a battlefield right. art. They think of it as the elderly uh, communing with the birds and nature in the park in China mm -hmm. um, early in the morning. Um, and, and actually a lot of what we see that people think is Tai Chi when you go to Asia in the morning is actually something else called Qigong, which is a, a sort of breath or energy exercise. Some of it is Tai Chi. Um, but Tai Chi was a battlefield art. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a health art if you think of walking away and surviving the battle. If mm -hmm. that's healthy, uh, which of course, you know, better than to lie there in a pool of blood. You survived. Um, you survived. So it was very much a longevity art in that sure. sense. A uh, life cut short on the battlefield is not a lifelong and well lived. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yes, it, it does have that dimension. But uh, there's also all kinds of data now. You know, the one of the buzzwords, I, I don't care for it much, but I'm going to use it because it's so common now, is evidence-based medicine. This, mm -hmm. is, this is an effort... Uh, of allopathy of Western medicine to try to subsume and link with uh, other medicinal traditions and other cultures mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and bring all that sort of under the fold of uh, our our healthcare system here, which, as I'm sure everyone listening to this knows, is deeply, deeply sick and broken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, efforts aside of trying to put that under a Western umbrella, this idea of evidence-based medicine is like, can we test using uh, placebo-controlled, randomly assigned uh, studies, mm. the effects of practices like Tai Chi or meditation or yoga, acupuncture, mm. Qigong, and so on and so forth. Um, and discussing why that approach is challenging when it comes to things like tai chi is sort of beyond our scope right here mm -hmm. it has to do with the study design and it has to do with the idea that if you're going to design a study you have to know at least some of the variables that you are inquiring about and testing for right in a lot of cases when we design these studies we have no idea what we're testing for we just want to know whether it quote unquote works right and that so that <laughs> doesn't necessarily make for a good study mm -hmm. sometimes people come up with some ways of accessing it and there have been some interesting ones. But in any case, despite that limitation, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of studies, and maybe now more than hundreds, um, which you can see by going on PubMed, which is the internet uh -huh. uh, uh, portal for the library of the National Institutes of Health, right? Um, which details and, and lists all the studies being done of the kind that I've just mm -hmm. referenced. Um, regarding uh, Eastern healing modalities, including Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. And and the results are spectacular. You know, they're, they're really, they're spectacular, not necessarily in the dramatic effects that are often shown, 
but rather in the in the definite effects that are shown over such a wide range of syndromes and conditions. Right. So Tai Chi for <clears throat> everything from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's to insomnia and ADD mm -hmm. and arthritis uh, and, and so on and so forth. There's a very long, long list. Mm -hmm. uh, blood pressure, balance. You know, for older people, morbid falls become one of the main causes of morbidity and mortality. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all heard the story or experienced it ourselves. And once you have a fall like that, you know, you're never quite the same. You can't right. come back from it. And it often begins the downhill spiral from which people don't recover. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to avoid falls like that um, is a really great reason to, to train in Tai Chi, whether what I've said about Taoism is of interest or not, whether it offends your religious sensibilities or not. Um, still not falling down in the bathtub, the shower, you know, stepping off the curb and so on. Um, is a great way not to die younger. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> so Tai Chi is very popular for a lot of different reasons. <clears throat> it seems to me, too, that a large part of healing is a mindset. And I think positive thinking, a positive attitude, I, I think that has a large part in, uh, in, in healing in general. And uh, I... I um, I dabbled in Tai Chi and Qigong uh, several years ago. I was enrolled in a program, and um, that was a part of our start to every day. And it was fabulous. And it was just wonderful. I enjoyed it very much and, and would like to do it again someday, make it a regular part of my routine. So the reason I'm not seeing you at class in Boca is what exactly? <laughs> you got me, yeah. and yeah. you know I'm that. Sorry, the, I, I must have missed the part where you explained why you're not coming to class. <laughs> right. yeah. So um, how about how about this? Your point about mind body is very important, and mm -hmm. I thank you for bringing it up. Mm -hmm. um, we in in Western medicine, you know, there's this phrase a mind body, and now again as part of that same desire to sort of subsume. Uh, older practices under allopathic medicine, uh, people talk about mind-body medicine. Mm -hmm. And they point to Descartes, the 17th century Dutch philosopher, who, you know, uh, French, lived in France and was Dutch, or was Dutch and lived in France, I can't remember. <laughs> the one who said, uh, René Descartes, the one who said, I think, therefore I am. You know, the, the, the minute you start to talk about the mind and the body as two separate things, you have begun... You've taken the first step down a path um, which I, I cannot follow. Mm -hmm. um, it's a construct, and I understand why we talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not really too accurate. It might be slightly helpful, but it's not too accurate. Mm. You know, we are not creatures of mind, and we are not creatures of body. We are creatures of both. Right. And, the, and the division between them is falling under the sword of science as we speak. Mm -hmm. Everything from the microbiome, all those little bugs that live in your gut and how they affect your mood, to the plexus of nerves the size of a mm -hmm. cat's brain that mm -hmm. resides in your, in your gut mm -hmm. and has as much to do with how you feel and what you think as the brain between your ears does. Right. All these things which would have been crazy ideas even 20 years ago are mm -hmm. now increasingly accepted. Mm -hmm. And the interface between what we call the mind, the brain anyway, mm -hmm. and the rest of the body is not nearly as cut and dry as we were taught uh, when we went to medical school years ago or were taught in, in high school. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, actually, it's much more finely nuanced and rich. That right. interaction is, is electrical, it's chemical, there are neurotransmitters crossing all kinds of talk and, and communication going on from your fingertips to your belly to your heart. Right. And, you know, the heart is especially greatly uh, affected by how and what we think. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the entire field of epigenetics, which talks about how our environment and, and our beliefs, mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean by that our spiritual and religious beliefs, I mean mm -hmm. just our beliefs about who we are, what we're doing, what's mm -hmm. important, what, where we should go to, how we feel about our our. our partners and so on and so mm -hmm. forth, all of that affects which of our genes uh, are expressed and which ones are turned off 
so that we may have uh, something in our genome that says we're going to get sick at a certain age and die from a certain thing, but we can we can affect the expression of that gene right. so that it never happens. And that is a whole field of, yeah. for listeners who are interested in this. I, I suggest the book Spontaneous Evolution, mm-hmm. uh, uh, also the precursor of that book, um, uh, the biology of belief, both of which are written by Bruce Lipton, a uh, uh, Stanford researcher. Anyway, there's a whole lot to say about mind body. Mm-hmm. But for now, let's just say that it's not the best term and that we need to broaden and deepen our understanding of just how much how we think about ourselves and who we are affects how long we live and how healthy we are. Right. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating subject. Now, you mentioned you. Um, you do Tai Chi at uh, Boca Medical. So Boca Regional Hospital, yeah, um, the one in East Boca, the major mm-hmm. hospital, uh, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. at the Lynn uh, Women's Center. Right. The Women's Center is a, is a standalone building next to the main hospital. Right. Um, on uh, Meadows Road and 13th Street, I think is the corner. Um, so that's one... Uh, all these classes are listed at my website, Terrific. Monk Yunro, M O N K Y U N R O U dot com. There's also a really wonderful Saturday morning class in Deerfield at a studio called Shall We Dance, mm. which is uh, at nine o'clock Saturday mornings, just south of Hillsborough Boulevard on Federal Highway in Deerfield. Terrific. And they're all open to everybody, all levels, all ages. Great fun, great community. Well, we'll make sure that we put this information on the YouTube link and, uh, Monk Wingro, it was an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Thank you very much for having me.